The difference between noxious nociception and non-noxious nociception is this. Let me give you an example. Okay, I'll give you an example. Let's pretend I'm in front of you right now with a lighter in my hand. And I sit back and I go click. And I put my hand over top of that flame. At first, you would agree with me that you would feel the heat of that flame. Yes? Mm -hmm. That is called non-noxious nociceptive information, which means this. There is no damage yet, but the potential for tissue damage is there. There's no damage yet, but the potential for tissue damage is there. Okay? Noxious nociception means if I left the flame going and didn't move my hand and I actually burned myself. Now you have actual tissue damage. This is called noxious nociceptive information. Do you understand me? One is that the potential for damage is there. The other one is that forget the potential, there's actual damage now. Pain is your limbic system's response to nociception. Pain is a perception. You don't have a pain receptor. You have a nociceptor. Pain happens in your mind. You ever hear people say like, oh, but I got a high pain tolerance and I got a low pain tolerance. <laughs> no, we all got the exact same tolerance for nociception. You just got a different perception of what pain is. Pain happens if your limbic system is activated. It means pain is an emotion, which means pain is a perception. So how on earth can you be pain-based if you're chasing someone's emotions? No deceptive information fire into the brain. You have to, no option, you have to activate the hypothalamus. And if you activate the hypothalamus, what's going to happen is you're going to release stress hormones into the body. And if you know anything about neurological tracts, you know that the spinal hypothalamic tract is part of the anterior spinal thalamic tract. So if the anterior spinal thalamic tract is activated through nociception, it has to activate the hypothalamus. That's the whole thing with tissue injury. Your hormones in your brain says, I just got tissue damage. Release hormones to try to help me out. And it releases adrenaline and it releases cortisol. And short term, those two things are very good for you because it gets your muscles ready, it gets your heart pumping, you lose uh, stuff in your throat, you get your moisture out. Why? Because it pulls blood from your organs, pulls blood from reproduction, pulls blood from your immune system, so it fills up your muscles for a fight or flight response. And short term, that's a good deal. Long term, that causes nothing but disease and illness. Long term. So if you have constant nociceptive information going to the brain, constantly releasing stress hormones, constantly pulling energy away from the reproductive system and the immune system, you think there might be a chance that someone's having a hard time getting pregnant? You think there might be a chance that someone's gonna get sick all the time? Now your pyramidal system is also activated now. So the, we talked about extra pyramidal in uh, module one. The pyramidal system is also activated. So this is what I need you to know. These are your cortical spinal tracts. These are your cortical spinal tracts. And you have two cortical spinal tracts. Okay, one of the cortical spinal tract, the lateral cortical spinal tract, is going to be going for fine motor skills, right? So going to your fingertips is that fine little itty bitty stuff. Okay, your anterior cortical spinal tract though is for gross musculature. 